welcome to Quilt and Code. This video is all about putting a panel together with a three yard book. We're gonna learn all sorts of things, how to cut your panel, how to make sure you've got directional fabric, and I take you all the way to the end with the binding. So let's go. For my butt first coffee quilt, I am going to use the For the Love of Coffee panel from Benertex Canvas Fabrics. With that comes a couple of coordinates. So I have this coordinate and this coordinate that go with the panel. And then I picked out this lovely brown that looks like coffee. I am using a quilt out of Donna Robertson's Easy Peasy Three Yard Quilt Book. Easy Street is the one I've chosen. The reason why is because it had six large um, squares within the quilt that actually measured up very well to my quilt blocks on my panel. She has a wonderful diagram throughout the book of every single quilt. And so knowing that I was going to be working with directional patterns and I was going to be using a panel, I wanted to make sure that everything was going to be going in the right direction. I went ahead and printed out the diagram so I could make sure I had everything going correctly. After studying the pattern, I noticed that I needed six of these going up and six of these going down. And I could also tell where my strips needed to be so I would know how to sew my quilt. I highly recommend that you do something like this. Take time to write down where everything's gonna go and that will make your panel quilt go even quicker. So this pattern calls for lots of strips as do many of the three yard quilts. And so I've gone ahead and I've cut out the strips that I knew I was going to be fine with. And then I also cut out strips of my others, but I was very, um, I was conservative because some of those strips are not going to be needed since I'm using the panel in the quilt instead of the fabric. And so I've been a little conservative, but this one I knew I was going to be able to cut out everything. First thing I want to do with my panel is cut it down to the size that I need. So I have it cut down on, well, I have it cut down on one side and I noticed, and you'll notice with all panels, that sometimes your straight lines aren't exactly straight. So you can see how this one is sort of doing a little curvy thing up here. There's not much I can do about this, but sometimes if you do a little bit of stretching this way and a little bit of stretching this way and you just sort of stretch your fabric out, then sometimes you can get it a little straighter. It seems to be working. And then, so this line right here is sort of doing a bowed out thing. I'm sort of moving it, trying to get it as straight as possible. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring in my iron and my steam and um, really just iron this down as, as best as I possibly can, trying to get it straight. Um, and then I'm just gonna have to wing it with my sewing machine and and try and make sure I I get that straight, but you can sort of see how it's it's much better than it was. So take that time to press it a little bit, play with it, and then we'll cut it. It's not perfect even after ironing, but that's okay, I'm gonna be all right. I am, if I cut this design a quarter of an inch away from that edge, I am getting the desired length I need. So I like to always cut away from me and then now I can use that I have two straight edges. I can now use my cutting mat to make sure that I am straight. So if you don't have a squaring ruler, you can always use your cutting mat. All right, now that all my blocks are ready to sew, I'll show you how to get those stitched together. Now it's time to sew my strips together. I have my little strip on top of my big strip with the right sides together, and I'm gonna sew a quarter of an inch on my raw edge. I like to use my regular presser foot for making a quarter of an inch, and then I move my needle over to the position that I usually have a quarter of an inch 90% of the time. Every quarter inch is different and sometimes I can wake up in the morning and it is not a quarter of an inch. If you use a quarter inch foot or tape or whatever, 
then go for it. So I am using my the edge of my pressure foot to mark my quarter inch. And as long as I'm consistent, everything will be fine. Whenever I am done with all my, my seams, I like to press everything open just so that I know everything's gonna be crisp and clear and clean. I like to press toward the dark. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn this over and then I can warm this up just a little bit and turn it over just like this and that will press my seam toward the dark. Now it could be when I go to put everything together that I haven't pressed them in the right direction and that's okay. And sometimes your book or your directions will tell you which way to press everything so that it will go in the right order. Now that I've pressed everything, I'm ready to make my next cut. So I always start um, by taking off my salvage because I do not want that salvage right here, this raw edge here in my quilt. So I'm gonna go ahead and take that off first. And then I can turn my piece around and do all my cuts from there. I am measuring up vertically and horizontally with my edge. And so I can already see that over here I'm a little curved off and that's fine. So I'll go ahead and trim that off. I'm gonna make my straight cut here, move this out of the way turn this over and just straighten that edge right up. You're gonna wanna watch every two or three cuts to make sure that you don't have to recut anything and line everything back up. To cut my directional cup fabric, I went back to my diagram. I need six blocks that are going to have coffee cups going up. And then, um, so for those coffee cups fabric that needs to be going up, the stripe fabric needs to start on the top. For the coffee cups that are down here on the bottom of the block, the coffee cups need to have their stripe on the bottom. And so it helped me to have my diagram telling me exactly where my stripe started. I've gone ahead and sewn my strips so that I have one strip that has the coffee cup going up with the strip on the bottom and one strip that has the coffee cup going with the strip on the top. I did do a little bit of cutting and pasting there because I didn't need um, all of that fabric. I just needed half a row of one part and so I was able to split that fabric in half. Now that I have all my pieces cut out for my first cut, I am going to put another piece on one of the sides. Now for the fabric that doesn't have a direction, it doesn't matter really which side it goes on, it just needs to go on a side and then I can flip it however I need it. But with my other pieces, I do need to make sure I'm putting it on the right side. I am gonna go ahead and stick them right sides together and get the, the ones that don't have any worry to them and then I'll worry about the other ones. So I like to strip piece this. So I've gone ahead and placed my little strip on top of this strip and I'm gonna go ahead and sew this. When I get close to the end, I'm gonna bring in my next piece. Now I'm being particular about how I want these strips to go because I have my directional fabric. I have gone back yet again to my diagram. I wanna make sure that I have a strip on the top and a strip on the right for these top blocks. So I am gonna go ahead and do all of my coffee mugs that are in the top right the same way. I'm being specific with this one. I know I want my coffee mugs to go um, straight up, but I want this one to be on the other side. So I have turned them upside down and I have turned my whole pile upside down so that I can make sure I don't mess those up. Mm -hmm. 
before I iron these, I'm just going to simply snip them apart. It'll make it easier for ironing. And then I can trim them down so that they are the correct size. Um, for this one, I'm actually going to simply come from the front because I have a seam over here. It'll make it a lot easier if I simply go from the top and push that seam over. There may be a time during the quilt that I need to change that, but I'm not sure of it right now. I also like to go ahead and press and trim as I go so that I can make sure and catch any mistakes before they happen. All right, now I am going to trim down. So I am just looking and lining up with that horizontal, I mean vertical line right there, and I'm just gonna trim that right off. And I'm gonna do that with all of them. My pattern didn't take into account that I'm using a panel for my big squares. So I measured my big square and know that I have the right dimensions. And then normally in the pattern, I would take my little piece and I would do it on a big piece of fabric on the top and the bottom. Since I am using a panel, I'm gonna go ahead and attach my strips to the top and the bottom of each panel piece. This is a great time to use chain piecing. I can do all of them at the same time. I rough cut them on the edges just to separate them out. Now I'm gonna do a nice pressing along here, top and bottom. And now I'm gonna trim off these edges right here. I'm just gonna trim these little edges off right here. And now I'm ready to go and add the long strips on the sides. All of my panel blocks have been nicely framed. So now it's time to put the other blocks together. All this attention to detail and making sure that my cups stay upright has paid off. And so everything is ready to go. This is just a simple four patch to put together now. So I'll put this one together to this one and this one together to this one. And I will streamline the process all the way down. Before I start sewing, I went ahead and placed all my pieces into piles and so that I know everything's going in the right direction. And now I can just take these piles that are six, 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 and six over to the side, bring my sewing machine in, and I'm ready to go. Since my piles are here, everything's nice and organized, and I can just get sewing. I'm going to press them all and I'm going to press them toward the, I'm going to press them toward the chocolate side. And the reason why I chose the chocolate side is because if you'll notice, that's how the seam's going to want to go anyway. And that's how they're going to go on all of them. So I'll give everyone a nice press and then we'll put the final stitch in. Now that I have the top and the bottom sewn together, and now that I've pressed toward the chocolate side, all these seams are gonna nest in nicely together. And so by nesting, I mean that I'm trying to get these seams so that everything will line up together. The seam is actually the most important thing to me because that's, that's what gives me the crisp look of the quilt. And so I will use a pin to make sure that I have that nesting right just so, and so you can see how one seam allowance goes to one side and the other seam allowance goes to the other and that the seams just, they nest right into each other. And then I can worry, if I have a pin here, then I can worry about what's going on in the outside. And so that I am gonna line all these up and go for it. If it turns out that I have a little bit more fabric on one side of the other than the other, I always put that side down toward my feed dogs. The feed dogs will pick up more fabric than my presser foot. And so it sort of helps 
ease that extra fabric in. So I noticed here on the bottom side, I have a little bit of extra fabric. So I'm gonna go ahead and stick this one in with the black or my um, focus piece down on the bottom. Once I get to my pin, I go ahead and take out my needle. I mean, I take out my pin and then I line up the rest of the piece because like I said, the um, that nesting is what's so very important. And so I make sure that that nesting gets taken care of before I go anywhere else. Because I'm letting my machine do all the work, I don't have to worry about pushing or pulling or prodding. I can just worry about easing my fabric in if necessary. And I'm gonna do that with all my blocks. I'm blessed to have a nice table so they don't have to get down on the floor, but it's really important to make sure that your directional fabric that we have spent so much time making sure is going in the right direction stays in that right direction. So use the floor, use a bed, use a dining room table, whatever you need to do to lay your stuff out to make sure everything's going in the right direction. Once I have it all laid out in the right direction, I like to, um, fold over from the center so that I can stitch along that line and take it straight to the sewing machine. I can now chain piece down the whole side of my quilt. So I'll start with those first two blocks on the left and then I'll add that third in a second. With any quilt and with any pattern, it's so important to make sure that you're squaring as you go. So this pattern is very, very good about, and all the three yard books are very, very good about telling you what your final dimensions are supposed to be. And so in order for me to square this block up, I line up horizontally and vertically, and I can already tell that some things are a little bit wonky. And I do this every step of the process, just to make sure that I have a nice straight seam all the way around. Now, if it looks like I'm cutting off a whole bunch, then I would be like, oh, okay, wait a minute, let's stop there and make sure that everything is lining up just right. Now that I have this line as being a straight line, I know that this one is right, so I'm just gonna make sure that everything else looks good. This looks pretty good. And now I can line up over here and over here because everything's looking pretty good just a little bit down here on the edge, square it all up. And so that's why, the reason why there's so little for me to square up is because I've been squaring as I go along. And so everything's lining up really well. I've pressed everything really nicely so that all my seams are pressed toward my big piece right here. And that way my seams here are going to nest really nicely. Because my strips are getting longer and longer, I am gonna go ahead and pin this row. So I take my top one right here and put it over the next one. And I do that with the, since I have four rows, I'm doing that with the other two as well. And I start by pinning my nested seams. So these are the ones that I told you I moved toward the inside. So I go ahead and pin those first. Then I like to pin on the ends just so that I have something holding everything in place for when, especially because I like to go ahead and pin everything and then sew everything. So everything's pinned in place and then I can just strip away when I get to the sewing machine. Pattern states to um, stitch the border strips end to end, but I like the look of putting them together in a mitered style better. So in order to miter them, I place my first strip down and then I place the second strip down perpendicularly. I want to draw a line from one corner to the other, but I want to make sure that that line is going in the right direction. If I put that line going this way, that is not going to give me a straight piece of border. I'm, so I'm going to have to go this way with my line and stitch on this line. So I get ahead, go ahead and line it up with my ruler, and then I go ahead and actually mark it. You can free stitch it, but sometimes that makes it go off. So I like to have it nice and 
um, marked. And then I also go ahead and I pin, but I pin so that my pins are on each side of the line. That way I don't have to worry about going over any pins when I stitch. And then I do this with all my borders. So I just bring this over and I'm going to perpendicularly put the next piece on top, right sides together. Make sure that I'm stitching the right way and then draw my line. So I went to go ahead and start stitching my lines and I realized right off the bat that I had something wrong and I'm going to show you why. I, I made my line going in the opposite direction of what it needed to be. If I were to stitch this the way it was, then my fabric would not be doing what I needed to do. My line needed to come this way. Um, the reason why I picked this up really quickly was that when I go into my sewing machine, I'm going to have my tails always toward this side of my sewing machine and my long pieces are going to be coming out to my left. And so when I went to stitch this, I knew immediately that I had drawn my line wrong. And so that was just a speed and um, quick error that I did. And so I can fix it really quick by simply drawing a new line and then this heat erase marker will go away. But I wanted to point out that that's definitely something you want to watch out for is that if something looks wrong to what you're normally doing than it probably is. So when I do this, I know that these little tails are always going to go towards the inside of my machine and the long ones are going to go toward the outside. And then I just follow straight on the line. Now that I have my strips all sewn together, I like to go ahead and iron them first to make sure that I really am going in a straight line and I really did get it right this time. And I also go ahead and iron out my creases. As you can see, I have a nice straight line here. It's all falling on the floor. That one's probably a little bit off, but it's gonna be okay. Okay, once I've gotten all of those sewn and pressed open, I know I'm going in a straight line, so I'm not going to cut anything off. I'm not supposed to. I just rough cut it um, with my scissors, and I usually leave about a half an inch there to, I, you know, just to have a little bit more at those stress seams. So this will have a little bit of stress when it's on the board as the border. I went ahead and ironed out the whole quilt top made sure everything was pointed in the right direction since I'm using directional fabric and it looks fantastic. So now I have folded it in half because I'm ready to add borders. And like I said, I do, diff I do borders a little bit differently than the book. And so I went ahead and folded everything in half and then I measured from the fold. So once I have everything nice and lined up here, I went ahead and measured end to end on the fold. And then I cut my border pieces so that they were the same length. And we quilters usually start with the long sides. So I'm starting with the sides for this quilt. Now that I have the right measurements for both the top for both sides, and I've now that I've cut my pieces the right size. All right, so I'm going to take my border and I have folded it in half and then I'm going to place that half on the center of the quilt. This way I can have a completely square quilt. And so you can see how this lines up with the end. And I'm going to go ahead and pin that at the end. And then I go ahead and pin right here in the center. So I open that up. I have a nice little crease line so I can pin this right in the center. And then I'm going to go down here and I'm going to go ahead and pin down here at the bottom. And that way I am going to make sure that my quilt is, is square. Now I have a little bit of extra fabric. I can already feel it underneath here going from that end to that end. 
Well, I will make sure then that my quilt top is going toward the feed dogs because the feed dogs will gather up more fabric and they will ease that right in. I have been doing a great job though of measuring and making sure that everything is lining up so I won't have too many problems. So just sort of making sure everything feels pretty good. And then I do a lot of middle, middle, middles. So I pinned in the middle of this section. I'm gonna pin in the middle of this section and I'm gonna pin in the middle of this section. I like lots of pins whenever my quilts start getting larger. That way I don't have to think about what's coming. And I don't like the process of cutting off at the end. I want my border or my binding or whatever I am doing to measure up perfectly. That way everything stays square. I don't end up with, you know, wavy things happening in my quilts. It's just less frustrating for me when I get to the machine if everything measures out perfectly. And when I get to the machine, I am gonna make sure that these pins stay where they are and hold that fabric in place for me. So I have one done right here. And as you can see, I've just sort of folded up this other side. So I can also go ahead and do this other side while it's sitting right here in front of me. I pressed my quilt again so that I have my new border on here. And then I measured from the half, I took it and folded it in half and measured my half point from end to end and then cut the exact amount of new border that I need. I'm gonna do the exact same thing I did before. I am going to fold this border in half. And I, um, on this top, I had the, panel piece and so I had to fold my quilt top in half to make sure that I have the middle. So I have the middle, I'm gonna knock that right next to that pin. And you can see I'm a little bit short at this end, but I'm gonna make it work. It's gonna ha it's gonna be just fine. And I've opened it up. So I am gonna go ahead and pin from here. Everything is going to be just fine. And go ahead and pin my center. And go ahead and pin down here. And then I do a little shake just to make sure everybody's going to where they need to go. And then do my middles. So middle, middle, middle. And then let's look at this end. So, okay, so I got a little bit of extra fabric here. No worries. So we're just going to shake it out, make sure we get in the center. And I definitely know that I will be putting my quilt top to the feed dogs to make sure they can gather that little bit of extra fabric in there. And there's no telling why this happens. It just does. But by doing it this way, I know that in the end, I will have it all nice and square. So the only thing I need left to do with, all, with this quilt is to put on its final border and then it can go to the long arm machine. So I have um, marked the middle points of my longer sides and I have folded my border, my final border in half, just like I did before. And now I'm lining it up, pinning here in the center, pinning down here at the end, and then doing my middle, middle, middle. And had this been, um, a piece that just was way too long or way too short, I would have gone back and remeasured um, just to make sure that it really was the amount that I wanted. All right, let's sew. Now that the borders are on, it's ready to go down to the long arm and I can't wait to show you the long arm design that I have picked out for it. So let's go downstairs and get long arming. My binding consists of two and a half inch strips. So I've already cut five two and a half inch strips to go around my quilt. Three yard quilts don't usually ask for um, two and a half inch strips, but that's what I'm most comfortable with. So I always allot for a little bit of extra fabric for my bindings. <clears throat> I'm gonna put my strips together just like I did when I was doing my 
borders. And so I am doing a mitered or a diagonal seam because I think it leaves for less bulk as it goes around the quilt. So I place the um, pieces right sides together perpendicularly. I place a line going across there. And in order to check to make sure everything's going in the right direction, you can use your ruler to place on that line to make sure that you're going in that direction. And then I always place a couple pins just to hold the fabrics in place. And then I go and stitch on the line. It is normal for me to go ahead and do all this drawing, all this pinning at one time so that then I can go straight to the machine. Because I've done my prep work and pinned and marked everything, I can just chain piece through. I am sewing directly on the line. Now I can remove my pins, simply snip them apart, and I'm going to Make sure I'm going in the right direction before I do anything. Good, so now I am going to clip down to a half an inch and head to the ironing board. I take my long strip and I folded it in half and pressed it really well. Now I've come to the end. And before I even get started, I'm gonna go ahead and create my finished part. So I have folded over so that I am perpendicular. And now I'm simply gonna cut off. I even ironed that so that it's nice and neat. And now I'm gonna cut that off and I'm gonna fold it again. And so I like to have a nice, this gives me a nice, thick, easy binding to work with when I'm sitting in front of the television and it's dark and I just need room to sew. I've placed a walking foot on my machine because the walking foot has feed dogs on top as well as on bottom to help feed all this fabric through the machine. I have the tail end of the binding that I have already folded over. I am starting on the bottom of the quilt and I place the tail end about three to four inches behind where I'm starting to sew. That way, when I get to the other end of the quilt, I can just simply clip and tuck. All right, so here we go. I'm using a quarter of an inch stitch all the way around, but I'm going to stop a quarter of an inch before I get to the corner. All right, I stopped a quarter of an inch from the corner. So you can see how I have a quarter of an inch of fabric over here. I'm gonna take my binding and turn it up so that I have a quarter of an inch or a um, mitered corner here of what looks like on my binding. I'm gonna hold this top part and bring this down so that it's straight. Now I can start stitching right here until I get to the next corner. Okay, remember you want to stop quarter of an inch before the end. And I do back stitch just a little bit just to give that area some extra security. Bring it out. I've completely clipped the threads. Bring it out so that I have my nice mitered corner here. Then I'm gonna bring it back down Hold it in place till I get it under to the next corner. I've made it all the way around my quilt and I'm down here at the end. So I've made it to my end piece. I am simply going to take what I have left in the sewing machine and tuck it in to the piece I already had folded. I really like to pin at this point to make sure everything's good and snug before I go stitching over this area. So I've tucked it right in there. And 
And I usually pin in two places. I pin at the beginning of that cut and, and at the end of that cut. And then I can just not worry about anything slipping out as I stitch over. I go about an inch over the stitches that I started with, and then I'm done. And now for the finishing touch. I use a single strand of thread, but you're welcome to use a double, whatever's most comfortable for you. I have knotted the end, and I'm gonna come up inside the binding. I have gone ahead and used some binding clips to place the binding in place here at the opening. Okay, that's where I finished up and started up and when I was um, sewing. So now I am simply going to grab just a little bit of the binding and then I use my needle to go inside the quilt and come up in the binding again. And that holds it down and you can barely see the stitches. And I will continue that all the way around the quilt. And then as I get to my binding clips, I can just simply move those out of the way. I like to use a nice long needle for this. And underneath, I am feeling with my index finger to make sure I'm not going all the way through the quilt and I'm staying within the layers right in that batting layer when I go down in. So I go down in between the layers and then I come right back up. And I usually do about a fingers width apart um, depending on. So now I'm simply going to take and move my clips. I actually have a ton of clips, but I don't usually use them. Once I get through that first part, I don't really need them anymore. Um, when you're folding over, make sure you're only covering your stitching from when you were doing your, when you stitched it onto the quilt. Um, if you start going over way over like that, then it's gonna kind of start creeping into your quilt. And so keep it nice and consistent. And then once I get going, I can do two or three at a time. So I'll do one and pull it up, two, pull it up, and then I'll do three. And all of a sudden, the quilt really starts to fly. You can also use pins. You don't need clips. When I started out, I would pin or clip everything. Now I can do it without doing any of that. So now that I'm getting to the corner, I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to do that. So I am going to clip that down in place. And so what, how I do my mitered corner is to fold this over, get that all nice and tucked in. And then I start by the, the side that I'm on and I just bring that all the way over to the edge. And then I fold that over like that. Once I get that corner looking just the way I want it, I either stick a clip in here or I also can stick a pin. Pins sometimes work better for me because then I can make sure I have all the layers. And the way I stick the pin in is a few, I actually do a few little things just to make sure it holds it good and tight. And then I can stitch and not worry about it. And so, you have a mitered corner on the back and you have a mitered quarter on the front. Now that I'm at the corner, I like to go up and catch both layers. So that's a pretty big um, catch. Then I go up and go to the center. That way I get a little bit more stability in there and then I go back down. Pick it right back up at that corner and continue down the other row. 
I hope you have enjoyed this video and putting panels into quilts. We're gonna do many more videos like this. So follow us and like and subscribe our YouTube channel. We're on Instagram and Facebook. And you can also visit us at quiltandcode.com. Happy quilting.